Welcome back, Twitch chat, to Marriage Boot Camp. Ah, sorry, I get that confused every now and then since I spend so much time with my co-caster Sifa over here. Welcome back to game number three of the Omen Encounter, guys. It is tied up 1-1 between Voiboy and Night Blue, and we're about to jump into picks and bands of game number three here on Summoner's Rift. Now, last game, Night Blue's team, they looked just as good in the early game as last time, but they continued to carry that into the late game through great vision control. I'm still laughing about the marriage boot camp thing, I can't <laughs> lie. I felt like we did good during marriage boot camp. Maybe I was wrong there. Clearly. Well, maybe, maybe if you didn't disagree with me, we wouldn't have had to go to marriage boot camp, Sifa. I have an opinion, Tom! All right, my opinion, though, is that they keep banning away hook champs from I Am Matt Life, and it's working out pretty well from them. Uh, yeah, mock and norm level transition. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so banning away hook champs, no surprise there. Banning away Lee Sin and not Jarvan is interesting. Will we see Voiboy Boy first pick that? And it looks like, yeah, definitely don't want to give that to Zen the Solo King. And J4, currently the strongest jungler available. And will Nightblue have to pick up that Pantheon pick again is my big question. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Jarvan being banned out both games for more of the presence in top lane from Zen the Solo King. Not being able to be first picked up here for Sick of Scott in the jungle. Or maybe Voiboy Boy if he wants to try himself in the top lane. But being able to ban out that Lee Sin, leaving open only Pantheon with the Rek'Sai being banned out as well. Very interesting position for the junglers to be put in right here. We haven't really seen all too much variance from those three or four jungle picks just for most of the Omen Encounter playoffs, let alone the series here. We do have Janna as well as the Syndra being picked up right here. Moonway, extremely comfortable on the, the Syndra, even though he started off 0-2 in game number one. Looked all right on the Lissandra, but never really had the same kind of lead going into the late game as he did on Syndra to really be a big factor in those team fights. But with that one being left open here, he's able to pick it up. Well, yeah, Syndra, of course, such a powerful pick for Moonway in Game 1, able to use that AoE damage to the fullest extent, but, you know, how are they going to respond to this is the big question. They know that the enemy team won't be picking up that Morgana, so they feel very safe locking in that Vi in this situation, and Vi, not really a jungler we've seen too much of in this tournament, but when you have a Vi and you have, you know, the Nar and also the Leona in these situations, your hard engage is so very powerful. You see one Braille instantly locking into Stana as if to respond to that, just to give himself a little bit more mobility, and then Riven the hover over here. Curious to see exactly what Boy Boy's going to play from the champions hovered over. We can be pretty sure that this is not going to be a top lane Jarvan, but something else entirely. Yeah, it does look like it might just be the... Uh... The jungle driving, after all. But we keep seeing Boy Boy's team go back to hovering over that Akali pick. Doesn't look like it's going to be what they wind up locking in here, but the Tristana being something that they have in the bottom lane now. Rather than going for, like, the mid-game, the early aggression, the let's try to trade bottom lane as much as possible, they're going with an AD carry that's going to be more relevant in the later stage of the game, much like that Jax pick has continued to be for them. Jax, meanwhile, is still on the table, but it doesn't look like it's going to be what they go for. Oh, never mind. They went from one purple people eater and Cassidin, and they switched over to the other purple people eater, Jax, at the very last second. So, Boy Boy's team here, very interesting, because not only do they just have the Jax scaling into the late game now, but now the Tristana is going to provide some early game power in the laning phase, and then scale into the later game harder than that Graze pick was going to be able to for the past couple games. They have the Syndra and the Jarvan to try to mitigate that mid-game lull that Tristana and Jax may wind up having, but are extremely powerful during the lane phase themselves. You see Golden Glue not quite sure how to handle this lane matchup since the LeBlanc didn't work the last time. He's going to default to that Orianna pick. Orianna, of course, a very safe mid laner. Synergizes very well with the rest of the hard engage for the team. Obviously, the Orianna Vi synergy is so strong. And of course, you know, the chain CC from this team is so very strong. And this is pretty much their only option as far as team fighting goes, just because that Tristana pick is going to scale up and do so much work in the late game. The interesting thing about that, though, is that they don't really have a whole ton of peeling options outside of Janna on the opposite opposite side, Jarvan going to be able to do a little bit of work, but when there's a Vi on the enemy team, that Cataclysm not going to be quite as useful. Additionally, Nar going to be able to Nar people into that uh, briefly created terrain. It does get the stun if they, he knocks them into the Cataclysm walls, so they have to be careful about how they execute team fights here, but overall, if they're looking for another split push comp, if Void Boy is looking to snowball, this looks like the team to do it on. Well, the very interesting thing here in this game is last game we were talking about how 
Jacks needed a dive buddy, and with the Lee Sin off the table, it's going to be Jarvan that he's going to be jumping into the back lines with. On the opposite side, though, Night Blue's been able to pick up somebody that can also get into the back lines in the jungle to dish around the pain with Nar. It's going to be this Vi pickup, and Golden Glue, he's comfortable on the Orianna in the mid lane, picks it into pretty much any matchup he's not necessarily wanting to play a direct counter to. It works really well in these team fights, but having a guaranteed delivery system for that Oriana ball on Vi with her assault and battery is going to be massive for the dragon fight centric playstyle that Night Blue's team has continued to play. Dragon fights, of course, being very key here. We've never seen a team get to five dragons yet, but with this lineup, Night Blue's team might just be able to do it. Zen the Solo King getting progressively better and better with this NAR pick. You saw him itemized with that Brutalizer last game, forced Voiboy onto a much more defensive set of items, kind of delaying that Trinity Force, Blade of the Rune King power spike. So overall, you know, despite the fact that I think Voiboy's team came into this much, looking much stronger, Night Blue's team is doing a very good job of adapting. Unfortunately for them this game, their team comp is not very versatile. You know, there aren't really any options as far as split pushing. They're pretty much all in on the 5v5 engage. So a lot mm -hmm. of this is going to come down to which team has superior warding control because whoever gets the team fight that they want is clearly going to win out in these circumstances. Well, we'll see who gets those team fights and who winds up coming out on top in just a little bit. It's game number three of our best of five Omen Encounter finals here. Will it be Voibar? Will it be Night Blue taking this one? You'll find out right after this. Everybody to hear Summoner's Rift, where Voiboy and Night Blue are tied up 1 1 in the Omen Encounter Grand Finals. This is game number three, and we're going to see who starts to take a lead in this best of five series. Boy Boy's team is going to be over on the blue side. It's going to be Night Blue Squad over on the red side. And Boy Boy's team seems to be grouping up, trying to get some of that early game vision control that they got in every single game thus far. And Night Blue's team continuing to line up at the line of scrimmage and avoid it. <laughs> Boy Boy's team once again doing pretty well in a lot of these situations. That good early aggressive vision control you see coming out. Very a lot of patience from Oriana and Leona in this situation. Um, you know, not giving up their position at this stage of the game. Voivoy's team overall has shown very good control of these level ones, and Night Blue's team pretty much has aired on the side of caution in nearly every game. Of course, on the red side, you are at a little bit of a disadvantage, and that the Krugs are so powerful, whereas the Gromp is a little bit of a less than ideal start. You see Night Blue hovering on the top side. He too may go for the Krugs, which will put him uh, on the path to bottom lane or mid lane. I'm curious to see where the jungle attention is focused. You see, once again, Void Boy appears to be starting a jungle camp before going to the top lane. Uh, this has worked out very well for him in the past and has saved him from a lot of the early game harass that Nar can put out. But Zen the Solo King has been playing better and better in each of these games and appears to be learning more and more about this matchup as these games go on. Yeah, in game number one, it was really about the fact that Voibo was able to take the uh, wolf camp for an early advantage, and then it was Zen the Solo King that was trying to bully him out while being at an experienced disadvantage. This time around, Voibo's team back on the blue side, he's going to be doing the same exact thing, but this time with the raptor camp. He starts off with the counter strike, making sure that all those little raptors and everything don't stack on too much damage. He's able to clear it out rather quickly. He's going to recall, get some, uh, get some extra potions, get an experience advantage by hitting level two, and just tell teleport back up to that top lane once again and Zen the Solo King unfortunately on Nar not having the same kind of capabilities to do so with the Krugs on the top side of the map. Zen the Solo King though doing some pretty smart tactics here did pull the wave up a little bit to try to help freeze the lane and freeze the lane in that position it will be naturally pushing towards Voiboy Boy now as a result but Voiboy Boy appears to be unafraid does know that because of that decision he has the level 2 advantage and using it to the full extent perhaps a bad decision as it turns out from Zen the Solo King is he is not able to get level 2 before Voiboy Boy is able to make it to that lane Voiboy Boy, of course gonna get some extra pots gonna get a ward from that decision and will be pretty safe to farm up here now Zen the Solo King after losing that trade is going to be behind for a substantial period of time Yep, and with that uh, health potion being burned, that means, of course, he's not going to be able to really stay and sustain in that lane matchup either. But Voiboy Boy seemed to be getting some deep ward coverage there. Puts a ward all the way down by the enemy red buff and does see that Night Blue actually has not gone for that one yet. We do see that Sicko Scott, after getting his own blue buff, might be making his way up towards the enemy side of the jungle. We'll see if they wind up trying to contest this one. Night Blue winds up using the uh, Vault Breaker. 
goes in and puts a ward down, so he is going to see Sicko Scott and Voiboy kind of collapsing from either side. They're going to wind up backing away from this one now. Night Blue waiting in the brush. The flag goes out from Sicko Scott. He sees that he's there. Golden Glue on the opposite side puts a ward over by the Raptors, and it looks like now the mid laners might be trying to join this fray as well. Voiboy winds up pushing Night Blue Black a little bit, and Tensions are getting kind of high by this red bluff area. We could wind up going into a 3v3. Moonway doesn't know when they're standing on a ward right there. Level 4 for Moonway could be a big factor here. Everybody else in this fight is only level 3. So with the extra little oof on his spells, we'll have to see if that winds up being a big factor here. Ooh, the red buff gets stolen away right there by the Syndra pull. The smite does wind up going down. It goes over to looks like it is night blue picks it up with his own smite so tensions high by the red buff area but night blue is able to get a get the buff after all night blue does have to blow his flash though however good move map movement from boy boy's team as a whole uses full advantage of that early ward buy from starting the raptors camp they capitalize on that vision very well and of course if that had turned into a fight it most likely would have gone uh, in favor of Void Boy's team just because of how much power Jarvan and Jax can do in those kind of close range jungle skirmishes. Vi, of course, needs a little bit more time to power up. Not able to win out quite as well in those situations. And Moonway, as you mentioned before, with that level 4 advantage would have been pretty huge. But, of course, nothing comes from that. And as a result, Nightblue just down a flash for a few minutes as the jungler. Not going to be the biggest impact, but... Boy Boy and the rest of his team continue to get deep vision wards in the jungle. They may be able to shut down Night Blue's early game aggression. We saw it such a pivotal part of Night Blue's win in the previous game. And, you know, if it doesn't quite work as well this game, uh, you know, this could be a game in the favor of Boy Boy's squad overall. Well, we'll have to see here. Without the early pressure being put down on Moonway in the mid lane is going to be the big question mark as to if he was such a big threat in the later stages of both games beforehand after being focused down, what is it going to be like if he's not as targeted heavily in the early game? And, well, it looks like our answer is going to come out right here. He's still going to be targeted, even though it's only Vi coming in with the Vault Breaker. First Blood once again goes over to Golden Glue in the mid lane as Moonway falls. Moonway going down there, a little bit of sloppy play from him overall, and now Nightblue able to put out exactly the amount of pressure he wanted despite having that flash down. And this is kind of, you know, I feel like Sicko Scott has been consistently getting out jungled in these games, not really reading Nightblue's approaches. You know, the one time that he does invade the jungle is when Boy Boy creates the vision. So Sicko Scott gonna need to step up his performance if he wants to come out on top in these games because, you know, Nightblue consistently getting early advantages for his team, where Sicko Scott. Uh, he's just not doing nearly as much that, you know, his big claim to fame at this point is that he denied Nightblue, uh, at least Sin pick. Well, Sicko Scott with his Jarvan pickup early on. He's gone back for his own Stalker's Blade, as has Nightblue. Already picking up a pink ward for himself in addition to a long sword. We'll have to see where he winds up making that first strike, though. Like we said, Jarvan, a little bit more of an early game oriented jungler with some of those ganks. Once he winds up getting some kills and helping his lanes out, able to build into like that off tankiness that he's able to provide into the later stages of the game. But Jarvan not being so much of the factor as this spy has been in the early game thus far. We'll have to wait and see, though. It does look like he's nope, he's just over by his own blue buff area. Going in for the wolf camp. Night blue had focused down onto the bottom lane, but he was fairly low after that gank in the mid lane and decided just to sit in tri brush and recall. Bottom lane though continues to be a bit of a pain point for Night Blue's team. Braille and Matt Life continuing to press up against Fabi and Azingi in this 2v2 matchup. And despite the Tristana pick up this game rather than going for a Corky, Graze, Lucian, the trifecta of 80 carries we've seen a lot of, this Tristana pick 56 compared to 41 CS. The big thing about this lane is that with Janna instead of Morgana this time, you know, you may not have the late game spell shield, but in the laning phase alone, Janna's tornado is going to be able to deny a Zingy's Zenith Blade. You can, of course, knock her out of that. So all of a Zingy's engage potential is pretty much gone, whereas previously, you know, you can black shield the Zenith Blade, but it doesn't stop a Zingy from coming over. Whereas, you know, Janna can deny the engage completely, except they flash on there. Yeah, Matt Life got the shield down on himself. The Ignite ticking away. Is he going to wind up going down? No, he barely survives. Now Braille has to hop and jump away from that one on Tristana. Fabi's flashing Nello. So is Matt Life, though. And Braille doesn't have a lot of health on his side either. So bottom lane engagement going in favor of Fabi and Azingi. They are going to use this advantage to get as much EXP as possible. Tristana may be able to stay in lane and get her own level 6, but with Janna without a level 6 and Leona with one, means that the next hard engage is going to pretty much guaranteedly get them a kill, especially if they have some support from Nightblue. Nightblue level 5 now quickly approaching level 6. You know, as he clears this camp, uh, or as he clears the next couple camps, he is going to get that. Probably going to have to donate the blue buff over to Golden Glue, but 
uh, by level 6 a lot scarier in this bottom lane now that they don't have a Morgana on their side. That's very, very true. Not having the Black Shield to really stop the crowd control coming out from the Assault and Battery is going to be a bit difficult. And without being able to be crowd controlled, you're not going to be able to knock her up from that one. So not being able to knock away both members that are going to be engaging on your AD carry. But speaking of uh, engaging, Azingi here trading back and forth with Matt Life just a little bit. The Ward War is going to be a big factor now as the Dragon seems to be where Night Blue team is setting their sights on. Boy Boy teleported up the top lane so he doesn't have his available. Zen the Solo King still has his. This looks a little bit familiar here. There's Ward over the backside of Dragon Pit in case the teleport needs to come in, but it doesn't. Red Team secures the first Dragon of the game. Good use of that pressure they put down in the bottom lane to take that Dragon. And, you know, sort of poor back timing from Boy Boy's team overall. All the members caught back there, not able to contest in any way, shape, or form. However, when you have such a strong mid-game team fight coming out from Night Blue's team, uh, there's not really a whole ton of options as to how you can contest those objectives. You can see Sicko Scott now trying to create pressure in his top lane, but uh, really they can't afford to keep giving up those dragons. They don't have as many well-scaling champions on Night Blue's side, but still that 6% AD and AP may not be too valuable at this stage in the game, but as they move forward, it's just going to get more and uh, more value. Well, in the top lane here, it looks like Boy Boy and his team a little bit more focused on pulling around this Gnar pick from Zen, the Solo King. He didn't go for the early Giant spell into tank full build. He went for the Brutalizer first like he did last game. But Sicko Scott continuously visiting this top lane and continuously trying to put pressure down on that tower. However, Azengi, after that dragon attempt roaming down towards the mid lane, went between the two towers, was unable to pick up a kill on Moonway, but did force the flash away from Syndra mid lane. Yeah, Zingy's roaming, however, is going to cost Fabi a little bit of CS here. Him not being in that lane means that I Am Mad Life is free to zone him off of the creep wave. Not too much, though. This small CS differential not going to affect him too heavily, but one Braille is going to get him closer and closer to that late game persona stage that they have to be so careful about. The interesting choice that I see in this bot lane is that Janna, you know, opting to run that Ignite once again, like, you know, Exhaust not so great against their team. There's no clear one source of damage that can get shut down, but still, Exhaust such a crucial part of bot lane, and Ignite not going to really have too much of an effect against uh, a non-sustained base lane. Well, Sicko Scott gets caught out here, trying to help out his top laner by Night Blue. The slam dunk comes in. In comes Golden Glue from the side too. Command Shockwave goes off. Night Blue trying to get him with a Vault Breaker. Boy Boy is going to go down as a house gets dropped on his head. Three members from Night Blue's team in the top lane pick up two kills against Boy Boy. I like the casual turnaround. Like he throws the house, knows it's gonna hit, and just starts walking sideways. Beautiful kill from Zen still looking. That max range boulder toss doing so much work. And you know, that skill is just so powerful. Level eight in our maxing boomerang first means that that's gonna be a level four boulder toss. And the base damage stats on that are just so high. So good movement from the team overall. Excellent mid lane movement from Golden Glue. You can see that Oriana is one of those champions that he's incredibly comfortable on. And uh, has had pretty solid impact across the map so far. One zero and two at this stage in the game. Bottom lane to Zingy trying to go in. The Howling Gale came out for Matt Life, but the burst from Graves turning things around right here. The buster shot from Tristana forces Fabi away from that one. Matt Life dropped down extremely low, but so has a Zingy. Yeah, unfortunately, at this stage in the game, Azingi not able to quite have the impact he wants to, especially in this bottom lane. We mentioned earlier how Janna can deny those engages. Golden Blue looking to get engaged on them here. Did get stunned. Yep, tried to flash away from that one, but sick of Scott's able to pick up a kill. Looked like a teleport was canceled from Zen the Solo King, trying to come down to help out Golden Glue in the mid lane as well. So that's going to leave his on almost a full cooldown, whereas Boy Boy's is just about up right now. Looks like the Dragon's still not going to be a big factor for a decent amount of time. However, it's going to be coming up maybe in another two and a half minutes or so. But Boy Boy's going to have teleport for that one, and Zen the Solo King is not. Teleport has been pretty crucial in the past, but Zen Soul King always very reliant on it to get the team fights that he wants. Void Boy, on the other hand, hasn't utilized it quite as well, mostly utilizing it to continuously apply pressure in this top lane. He's now trying to get the duel off, trying to trade at least a little bit before this Mega Gnar form comes out, and has to be careful here. Yeah, the Gnar against the wall, Void Boy getting stunned, Void Boy getting a house thrown at him once again. Another house goes down, Void Boy tries to hop, skip, and jump away from that one. He will survive through that one, able to jump away onto an allied minion, but experience disadvantage. The Mega Gnar coming in, a big transformation factor. Boy Boy is struggling in this top lane matchup this time. 
send the Soul King. I think solely responsible uh, for this advantage is that Brutalizer optimization to doing a ton of work for him. And Voidway a little bit questionable to engage when Zen the Solo King was about to get that Mega Nar form. Had to predict that that ultimate was going to come out. And of course, Nar has such short cooldown on his abilities just because of how uh, he's limited by that Mega Nar form. So, overall solid play. Gank in the mid lane though. Yep, Night Blue comes in, Moon Knight goes down, Sicko Scott trying to follow up as well, but it's a double kill for Vi. Night Blue picking up two for the price of none. Golden Glue's command, Shockwave displacing the Draven, helping keep him alive through that one. Now sights are set onto that mid lane tower. It will be the first one of the game for Night Blue's team if they can take it down. The Jana Shield is there to help a little bit, but unfortunately it falls under the force of three from Night Blue and the red team picking up the first tower of the game for themselves. Fabi pressuring the tower on the bot lane against this Tristana in a 1v1 matchup for the time being as well. Tristana gonna jump in though, winds up putting down the explosive shot, trying to get Fabi down a little bit lower. Matt Life threw up the Talon Gale, but it goes behind Fabi. Not gonna be able to capitalize on that trade. And with Dragon coming for about 50 seconds, Fabi's gonna wanna wind up recalling to kill himself back up. And the Solo King, meanwhile, taking this turret in the top lane, giving his team a more substantial gold advantage than they already have. Night Blue's team in such a commanding lead. I'm so surprised that they keep letting Zen get this Nar pick. And, you know, as we've gone forward, uh, Zen the Solo King has been transferring more and more from this team fight kind of focused player to winning out in these 1v1 solo matchups in the top lane, which has just been so huge because that was pretty much Voiboy's only strength in the last couple of games. Of course, his first game, Jack's play, pretty much entirely centered on scaling up and doing a lot of work in the late game. But with Zen the Solo King controlling the mid game and early game so well, it's going to be very hard for him to come back. It really is, especially the fact that he needs time to scale up. He still hasn't been able to pick up anything for his Trinity Force aside from a Longsword and a Ruby Crystal. At this point in last game, you're seeing him get the Phage, you're seeing him with the Double Doran's items going for a Sheen at this point in time. Nowhere near completing that Trinity Force quite yet, whereas bold pieces for a Warden's Mail in addition to the Brutalizer have been added to the inventory of Zen the Solo King. So going to be a while before Jack becomes a big factor in this one, but bottom lane, the fights are already breaking out. Monsoon knocks back Night Blue to flash away as well. So even though Assault and Battery is not quite up yet, Matt Life did not want anybody jumping down onto his AD carry in that circumstance. The dragon is live on Summoner's Rift right now, but Mumei and Sicko Scott are putting pressure on this mid lane tower. The teleport came in from Zen the Solo King. Night Blue coming in, the Assault and Battery is up. Goes on the Moonway, the flash over the NAR. Sicko Scott and Moonway just evaporate from the power of that one. It's a rampage for Night Blue and a kill picked up for Zen the Solo King. Moonway, such an important part of Night Blue's team comp as a whole. They have the choice to take this dragon or get the middle lane tower. It looks like they're going to try to go for both. Excellent play there and excellent engage. Poor decision making from Moonway and Sicko Scott not having enough vision control on that bottom side of the map to see the pinch coming and as a result getting caught out incredibly quickly Zen the Solo King does have to burn Flash there but you know a small price to play for a, for a dragon and two kills for your team overall. 5k gold lead now for Night Blue squad. It's gonna be pretty huge here. You see Oriana scaling up very quickly. Normally a champion that takes a while to get going, but because of the impact she's had across the map with that ultimate, and with of course the dissonance as well, it's just uh, an absolutely fantastic play from Golden Blue. Yeah, that was just absolutely devastating for Night Blue's team. They got so many objectives, had such a large gold sling, like you said, about 5,000 now in their favor. Three towers as well for compared to zero that Boy Boy's team was able to respond with, and they've gotten two towers deep in that mid lane. That means once again, with a gold advantage pressing into the mid stage of this game, and with the map pressure from these minions pushing against that no tier two mid lane tower, it's going to give Night Blue's team the one thing they lacked in game number one, vision control. It's going to be the thing that helped them win game number two. Two. Top lane over here though, we see Boy Boy going in for a trade. Sicko Scott wants a cataclysming in to lock up them the Solo King under tower. Boy Boy picks up a much needed kill, but Golden Glue on the roam up is able to get a response kill. Golden Glue now trying to turn for two. Boy Boy getting dropped low. The ignite is there. Flash away. But an auto attack and the clockwork wind up mean that Oriana picks up a double kill. Two for one trade in that top lane. Although they are finally able to get the mid lane tower on Boy Boy's side. Boy Boy's team a little bit too confident in pressuring that top lane, took a lot of resources and a lot of time to take down that very tanky NAR pick at this stage of the game, and good movement from Golden Glue. But quite frankly, excellent response from Moonway. You know, they do need any gold advantage they can get, and getting a kill and a tower there is definitely going to outweigh the two kills picked up by Golden Glue in that situation, but once again, that Oriana pick is going to be so powerful in the late game, so they have to be careful about letting it get there that much faster. 
Fabi pops the Ghost Blade and just two crits later forces back both Janna and Tristana from this bottom lane over here. Fabi on this graze working a bit overtime, although his CS differential still unfortunately on the side of Tristana. 166 came here to 143. But Fabi's got two assists to his name to help this team take down some, ta some towers and dragons, including this bottom tier one tower that now falls underneath Gray's mighty auto attack from his gun. It is going to be nine kills to two, four towers to one, and about a five and a half gold lead still in favor of Night Blue's team. Baron's going to be up on the map fairly soon, but I don't think any of these teams are necessarily going to be going for that one right away. What they are going for, though, is what we talked about before. Deep wards and vision control on Night Blue's side, immediately putting down a pink and three green wards in the, uh, the bottom side of the jungle from Void Boy's team. There's a lot of pressure on I am Matt Life in this game. If Boy Boys, or sorry, if Night Blue's team does decide to dive a tower, pretty much everything is going to rest on that monsoon. The disengage options are so limited, and the damage just isn't there yet for Boy Boy Squad as a whole. You see Boy Boy now getting engaged on Bias and Eat. At the same time, Golden Glue wants to pick up a kill on Moonway being caught out in the mid lane. Now Sicko Scott getting flashed forward on by Golden Glue in the top lane. Boy Boy also getting stunned up by Azingi. The Zen, the solo king, picks up that kill and it's a double kill for Orianna now as Sicko Scott goes down. Those wards by the red buff area for Night Blue's team just picking out Boy Boy's team and being able to take him down. Unfortunately for Night Blue's team as a whole, those kills aren't going to be worth too much for them just because there are no objectives currently available. Baron's still 15 seconds away, and of course the team as a whole would need to commit all five members to take it, and pretty much every character on the team has a very low mana pool at this stage, so they will get to farm up a little bit more. They may get a little bit more vision control in the jungle and may be able to steer away this red buff as, as well, but no turrets and no larger global objectives earned from that. Well, Rail going in here on the Night Bloom Golden with a Buster Shot away. The Monsoon comes out. Voiboy with the Teleport in as well. Rail dropping down fairly low. The Monsoon able to keep him alive. The Teleport was used there by Voiboy. And they're Zen not in the top really, lane. Yeah, they're not really able to get all too, too much for that one. Zen the Solo King split pushing that top tower. Dragon's not up for almost two more minutes. So with all that used just to try to defend against their red buff area, Voiboy's team, they lose a Teleport. That's not going to be up for Dragon Fight. And they lose so much forward pressure on the map. Top lane tower down to about a quarter HP. Boy Boy's team in a really tough spot at this point in the game. 7k gold lead coming in for Night Blue Squad means that they need to look for any advantage they can get. You can see that over eager use of TP was Boy Boy's hope to try to get something back in this situation, but you know, you can see how much he's suffering in this game, specifically 1, 3, and 0. Now finally able to pick up a try in Trinity Force uh, at 21 minutes, his first completed item. Not anywhere near a Blade of the Rune King, not anywhere near any kind of defensive items either. So not the late game jacks that Night Blue's team has to be scared of at all. And someone who's easily going to be able to get blown up by Zen the Solo King. 3-1-3, and three, so many resistances. Got that Brutalizer, has that Randwins as well, and is just doing work this game. Well, let's face it, nobody on Boy Boy's team is really anything Night Blue's team has to worry about right now. There's only two kills compared to the 12 already. Moonway Syndra, unfortunately, not working out the way that it was in game number one. Zero, four, and one being dominated by this Golden Glue Orianna. The Vi coming out from Night Blue has been a great asset in that mid lane, but also in the top side of the map. One, three, and zero is Boy Boy. Three, one, and three is then the Solo King as they start duking it out towards this top lane area. Has to flash away as Sicko Scott comes up here, but that's another member that's been getting caught out at one, five, and one. With the jungler away and two in top lane, the bottom lane is free for the rest of Night Blue's team to take. Four members strong down there with all that vision control know they're going to be uncontested. They take that tier two tower and with only a couple of seconds left on Dragon, Boy Boy in top lane with no teleport available. That's going to be another free objective for Night Blue's team. The Boy Boy might try to kill Zen the Solo King, but with all that rage stacking up and the turnaround coming in here, Boy Boy might wind up going down. The rage is full. Zen the Solo King tries to narm against the wall. He misses on that one. Boy Boy's going to be able to flash, just jump away from that one. The Cataclysm comes out here, but in the meantime, the rest of Night Blue's team take Dragon. Sick of Scott can't smite Dragon, decides to smite down on Nar, but Nar's going to get away from this 2v1 turnaround. All these pings going down the bottom lane as well as Braille trying to do the crugs. There's no vision for uh, Boy Boy's team. He gets obliterated by everybody that was just doing Dragon. Golden Glue throws up to the top lane. He picks the kill for himself, but the rest of Boy Boy's team that were up there are able to collapse on him. Across the map, it's two kills for the price of one in favor of Night Blue's team. They get the bottom lane tower, they get the Dragon. So much stuff for just one kill on Golden Glue. 
really, really poor decision making coming out from Boy Boy Squad as a whole. You can see they're kind of tunnel visioning onto shutting down this Gnar, but Gnar doesn't need to have a team fight impact if you keep committing multiple members to the top lane to try to stop him. Golden Glue able to pick up, of course, that solo kill in this situation. And even that, picking up the kill back onto Golden Glue, isn't going to be a ton of value here. A big shutdown, 500 gold to Void Boy will get him up to that Cutlass standard, but still. Um, regardless of how many items he gets at this stage of the game, if they keep putting two people in the top lane just to kill Zen the Solo King, they're going to keep giving up Objective Sword at that third dragon. Very important. The fourth one will surely drop too if Void Boy doesn't figure out a new way to play this game. And of course, the rest of his team uh, kind of not sure what they need to be doing, playing way too defensively and not responding well to the pressure on the map at all. A rough game for Boy Boy's team to be sure. Well, Void Boy in this bottom lane once again finds himself going up against the Solo King on Gnar. The damage is dealt on the mini Gnar, but as soon as the Rage War builds up, it's going to be a turnaround. The stun goes down, the Gnar against the wall, the house on top of his head. Void Boy has to try to leap away. We've seen this all game with the slam, the jam, and then the Solo King solo kills Void Boy. And then Golden Glue takes the blue buff as if to add insult to injury before Fabi, using that Yomu's active, runs in there. I want to say I love the Yomu's Ghost Blade on Graves in this game. Excellent choice for the itemization. Gives him a lot of dueling potential against characters such as Jax and Jarvan, but also gives him a small and brief power spike that uh, makes him somewhat comparable to Tristana at this stage in the game. Well, the dives are going through. Night Blue's going to get the Assault and Battery locked down onto Matt Life, and he goes down. Well, Braille has to hide to jump away from that one. Command Shockwave is still available after all of those dies anyway. The Inhibitor Tower goes down in the top lane, and the Inhibitor's going to go down. That doesn't really matter. The Surrender Boat comes out. Night Blue's team is going to take game number three in dominating fashion. 2-1 score for Night Blue. You know, Night Blue, this isn't the 3-0 that he got in the last couple of nights, but he's playing so phenomenally. You can see now that he's abandoned that Pantheon pick, uh, he's performing a lot better. Vi, of course, with those simple engage options, pretty much forces uh, Night Blue and Golden Glue into some strong synergistic plays. Anytime Night Blue goes in, Golden Glue is guaranteed a free alt. And I think they're going to be careful. have to be careful about how they play this next pick banded phase. Will this be the game we finally see Gnar banned away? I'm interested to see. You know, we've seen Zen the Solo King play Gnar. We've seen him play Jarvan, but not too much outside of that. Uh, they have to be careful, though, because depending on how they use their pick and bands, a Zingy may also be able to pick up that Belkaz. And it's starting to feel like there's no good options for Voiboy Boy in the pick van stage. And will Sicko Scott finally step it up this game once again, kind of having this poor performance, got caught out a lot as Pantheon, and once again getting caught out as J4 in this game. So we'll have to see if he can step it up, and we'll have to see if Voiboy Boy can swing this one back around. Well, there's a lot of questions that have to be answered still, Sifa, and we have a couple more games to do it. It's 2-1 to one in favor of Night Blue. Can they close out this best of five in a 3-1 victory? Or will Voiboy Boy and his Voice Scouts come back and try to force the final decisive game number five? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, more action on Summoner's Rift here at the Omen Encounter Finals.